Hey guys, it's Audrey and I'm a medical student here in the Philippines and for this vlog, you will get a glimpse on how I study for one whole week. Now, I actually got this idea from Dr. MD Prospect. I asked his permission and he actually gave me the go signal. So all credits to him. And before we start, now let's check his instructions and bump into his calculations because in the situation that I am in right now, I am left with no choice. Okay, so there are 24 hours in a day. Multiply that by okay. seven. You have also, to add a personal touch, I would like to put my own stress meter and how many times I had mental breakdowns for the whole week and my ways to cope up with the stressors. And if you sleep for seven hours, that gives okay. you two hours and 45 minutes cool. of break time that excludes 14 sleep. hours a day. Which means that 100 okay, hours divided by seven game. is 14 hours and 15 minutes of studying time daily. Okay, music maestro! Okay, good. Alright, let's start. So today is Wednesday, 10 o'clock in the evening, and tomorrow until next Thursday, I'm going to do 100 hour study. So there's definitely a big reason why I'm doing this, and it's for the fact that this should be my last week as a first year medical student, nothing less. Now, I feel motivated and I need to study as much as I can to alter my study mishaps for the entire year. So for now, my table's ready for the big week. I have bookmarked the pages I need to read on my iPad so I can start immediately. So. I started loving journaling as part of my daily routine to actually ground myself because, you know, I'm not proud of what happened. It was something that I was not able to control in the best way that I can. But the question that should stay in my mind is what is the best thing to do given the situation? So I will document how I feel throughout the day and which of these changes in my study routine I will definitely bring to second year medicine or PBL too. So hopefully you'll learn a thing or two and I'm always glad I could help you guys out. Good night. Hey guys, it's Audrey and it's July 9, 6 in the morning. And this is quite bright compared to the days that I've been trying to sleep because I usually sleep before I am to wake up at 12 and that's quite normal for what's been happening right now. I've been trying to distort my sleep pattern again just so I could wake up on the right time. And this is day one. So I'm feeling great, very motivated, and dopamine rush is legit. So we just finished our weekly torch meeting for some merchandise and school activities we'll be hosting for the next school year. So upon evaluation, one thing I changed in my study routine is studying the most challenging subject first and chunking it. So this subject has to be honest. Almost always drags my scores down every exam because I always study this last. And so what I'm doing right now is chunking my biochemistry topics for at least four hours a day until I finish it on Thursday next week. This way I won't get burned out for the rest of the week. I'm on my free break right now. It's 4.30 in the afternoon. So what I'm doing right now is to motivate myself of what's going to happen after Friday next week. This is movie number one and movie number two is Little Women. Okay, so I just had a talk with my friend Grace and she actually just, she she just passed uh, PBL1 and that was, that was very, uh, what she said was very heartfelt and I couldn't <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll stop my mental breakdowns and I'll just stop my mental breakdowns. I'm just really fine. I, I know that I can do this. So this is my main tip for studying and I cannot stress this enough, it's active learning. So during the orientation, we were actually given study tips in medicine, but as I evaluated myself throughout the year, there is one thing that I lack, um, it's studying practice questions. So once you listen to the correlates or wrap up lectures from the doctors, listen to this quote unquote, this is very important or this will come out in the exam because these are high yield facts you need to know in your readings. So mark a star on your notes, look for the testable concepts in every chapter you read and study smart. 
So I managed to study 50 questions, both fissile and biochem combined with rationale today. So one tip that I can give you is to use three colors at the side of each number. Red, most difficult. You don't have any clue about it. This is where you should repeat this question frequently until you get it done. Orange means so-and-so. You answered it correctly, but it took you a while to answer it. Repeat this question less often than the red. And lastly, green. That means you got it, congrats, move to the next number. <sighs> I just woke up at 6 in the morning, day 3 of 100 hour study routine. So far it has been good, but a little more pressure right here and there because I only have 3 more days before the big day. So I don't really want to take a bath right now because the water is too cold and it was raining last night but i have to do it so i could be awake make my coffee first and i won't even bother exercising now because i'm really pressured so bye guys <laughs> Welcome to the chapter on endocrinology. In the first section, I will be providing a basic overview of the anatomy, discussing the hypothalamic pituitary axis, and the concept of... Another tip that I can give you is to look for valuable sources on the internet for supplementary knowledge for you to grasp the concepts immediately than just reading the books. So I started listening and watching to physio videos right now. They talk about each concepts first and let you answer questions right after and this gave me wonders compared to just reading the book straight on. So I also started another set of 50 questions today and I focused more on the rationale behind the mistakes I had during the exam. I'm about to start my weekend call shift here and so I'm going to take you all along with me to show you what a typical weekend of call is like for us, especially here. So residents, we're both going to be on call stretching all the way from Friday at 5 p.m. up until Monday morning at 7 a.m. And I want to start off by just breaking down what our call schedule is like here at Mayo Clinic. So the senior residents on the service take call during the week. On the weekends, it's us second year residents, PGY2s. Who But I woke up earlier than expected. It is 4.30 in the morning. I'm sorry if I look bleak. But anyway, I have a lot of catching up to do. Another tip that I can pay forward to the students watching this is to never sit down for more than two hours. Stretch the most stressful muscles in your shoulder that are active while studying. And I know that my desk setup right now isn't the best ergonomically. And this is part of proper body mechanics to decrease your upper back pain and forward head posture. Now you have to stretch your trapezius muscle as in this video and your rhomboids by doing so. Don't forget to walk once in a while before studying another session of studying. So it is 12 midnight and oh my gosh, I should say that I am very lucky to have my family around with me throughout this process. They have been so supportive of me and they gave me lesser chores so I could pull this off. Um, for today, I reviewed the orange colors and the red colors. And honestly, during the during my evaluations of these questions, I can now say that I have fully grasped the concepts and hopefully I will be bringing these concepts with me until the exam day. And I'm kind of anxious right now. Two days left. I woke up earlier than expected and I felt groggy in the afternoon so I took a two hour nap and this is also the first time this week that I exercised. Mentally I am feeling really anxious about the exam and I need to tame myself down and one way to ground myself is through exercising so I did high intensity interval training in the morning and it definitely made me feel less jittery throughout the day. in the morning and as you can see I already have the GI bags hello hopefully I pass this time around and I'll be eating my my breakfast in a while and after that let's study and let's 
Let's do this. For neuroanatomy, how I studied is to put my notes and atlas side by side with the testable questions as well, and even listen to the songs that were used during the PT board exams. So for neuroanatomy, um, during my college days, compared to medicine, it's somehow similar, but it's more complex. I just want to stress that out because you might think that just because you have an idea about it during college, it would mean that you would pass the whole year. Um, no. If you don't read the concepts in your learning objective and correlates, you will fail the exam. Now, the books during college and during med school might be different and how the professors test it may be different as well. So if you want to know more about how I study anatomy and the cadavers during anatomy lab sessions, feel free to comment down below. And I'm studying right now. Oh my god, even doctors her age really need to study. And it's really cool. And it's inspiring to see that. Okay, back to study. Feed the fish. Where you Na, Go. Mm. We lost some. Oh, now put the salad. Oh, no, put the salad. Just making a new pan for the others because we have. We just received one, 100 more. This are koi fries, the alligator jar, it's carnivorous. So for my last day, obviously I'm scared of what's to come and with a pandemic going on, people in the medical field and medical students' stress and anxiety levels are pretty high. So worldwide, 1 in 14 people are affected with anxiety and anyone who has ever experienced this know how intense it can be, sometimes to the point that it's uncontrollable. So you always expect the worst even if there's no apparent reason to worry at all. So before I started, I took a long shower, made myself my favorite breakfast, and tried the Headspace app. So it includes meditation, sleep, and movement exercises to help you out, and it's said to decrease anxiety levels up to 31% according to a study in Oxford University. So it's a paid subscription, but for those people not part of the healthcare profession in the US. Um, it has a free month to try and see for yourself, and now that's what I'm doing. Hey guys, good night. I had to sleep now because my exam starts at 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> While waiting for the results to come by, 
I had the chance to listen to one of the top sports orthopedic surgeons in Australia, Dr. Sachin Kulyar, through Dr. Dehanyo about collapse in athletes. I feel like this is not only one of the ways to improve my skill as a clinician, but a way to motivate myself that I will become one of these great people one day if I don't stop whatever it is that I'm doing right now. I realized that we shouldn't just go for wishful thinking, but to work twice as hard as others. I'm Audrey Grivador, a second year medical student, hopeful to lead the rehab team one day. <laughs>